In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this beautiful opportunity that you've given each one of us. We thank you for this gift of time that you've given each one of us. We thank you for all the lovely people, Lord, who have gathered here. It is not by chance, but by choice we are here. To know you, to seek you, to have a relationship with you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the gift of Holy Spirit, who is our helper, our comforter, our counselor, our advocate, who helps us, who reminds us whatever things you have taught us, Lord. Holy Spirit, take complete authority of this entire Zoom session. Take complete authority of our minds and our vocal cords so that let every word that is spoken over here be only to glorify the name of Jesus and nothing of ours, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Okay, so before we start today's session, we will have a quick recap of whatever things we learned in the last class, okay? So I will briefly touch on a few things. So in the last class, we were learning about Joshua chapter one, verse eight, that says, this book of law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. Day and, night. and when you continue to do that, then what will happen, Sister Conrida? Yes, and then we will be, uh, if we meditate on it day and night, we will be prosperous mm -hmm. and successful. So who is responsible for my success and prosperity? Is it me or it's, is it God? It's me, myself. It is and me, myself. The, yes. Yes, sister. Yes. No, the same thing. If we meditate on the book of law and if we uh, reflect on it, so the prosperity and the success of my life depends on my own choices. I mean, on based on the choice. book. Yeah. Yes. So now I have a question, Sister Conrida. Okay. Say you're attending the classes. You're coming to my class every day. Okay. You're listening to the word. Okay. But you're not meditating after the class gets over. You're not meditating on it. You are going back and, you know, there's a problem at home. Then again, you're getting into worry and fear. Then will the word work in your life? No. It will, why it won't work? Because I am uh, more of meditating on my problem than the word of God. Yes, praise God. So let's learn from that scripture only. Let's go to that scripture. Thank you, Jesus. Just a minute. Okay. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise God. Yes, sister. So this book of law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall read and meditate on it day and night day and so night. that you might be careful to do everything in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous and you will be successful. successful so there are yes. two things. There are two things. First thing is, you speak the word from your mouth. That word mm -hmm. should not depart from your mouth. Means you shall, it has to be there. You have to keep confessing the word and you have to keep believing, keep meditating on it. Because the moment you go out of this class, otherwise what will happen? You'll come to this class, you will get, oh, I felt so good attending this session. And after that you go back then the problem remains. And then when you see the problem, you feel bad. And then you're like, oh my God, what a big problem. Now you're meditating on the problem. And when you're meditating on the problem, you will speak your problem. And what is happening because of that? You will do all that is written, not in the book of the law, but all that the devil is telling you to do. And then 
that will lead to a disaster isn't disaster. that how our lives are yes so who has to make the correction god has to make it or i have to make it we ourselves have to make it i have to make it yes we ourselves have to make it so how do we do that by confessing the word first is confessing the word believe in our heart and confess with our mouth so what happens when i'm speaking when i'm speaking faith filled words my ears are hearing and how does faith come i hear again hearing very good faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god yes. and what we continuously listen we will eventually believe whether you listen mm. to the news channel you will get into fear listening to the word of god you will get faith you can either have fear you can either have faith you can't have both okay the more you listen to the word of god the more faith comes and just having faith is not important you have to take a step towards it you have to go deeper in it you have to study the word you have to get that word into your system you have to make your everyday life based on the word of god based on faith and once you start doing it in your life then you shall make your way prosperous and then you will be successful praise god excellent so after that we also discussed another scripture that is hebrews 4:12 that says the word of god is alive and active powerful sharper than two edged sword so what is happening when we are opening our mouth and speaking god's word what is happening in the spiritual realm we are basically uh, fighting and my uh... it could be anything it could be our thoughts or anything we are we are having we are using the spiritual weapon mm, when we use very good yeah when we use the word of god hmm okay so we are in a battle whether we like it or not we all are in a battle but this battle is not physical battle it is a spiritual battle and this the battlefield is none other than our mind because constantly there is you know i have a choice whether i want to believe what god is telling me or the lies that the devil is showing me and it is easy to believe the lies of the devil because he shows us through physical symptoms he shows us through bad situations negative things in our life to control our mind to take access to it so we cannot fight thoughts with thoughts but we can fight it with the word of god now the word of god is compared to that of a sword now why do we use a sword hello yes why do we use a sword? why do we use a sword to kill the evil guy yes yes to kill the evil one so when i am using this weapon called the word of god what is happening i am taking the sword called the word of god and i am attacking the devil i'm attacking the lies and i'm taking authority over my situation over the symptom over the sickness over every negative situation and that is why it is so important to confess the word because if i am not going to attack the devil the devil is going to attack me praise god thank you jesus okay so based on this does anyone want to add something before we begin any examples or anything sister condrida anything you would like a uh, example as in uh, okay my own example i can give is it possible hello please god can you hear me yes uh, when you yes. said example uh, okay uh, yes. basically i am new to this but then uh, 
you know as i attend the class and uh, as you said once we leave back the class we have to meditate on it but uh, it so many times happens that you know that i don't and as you said you know your worries or whatever something that's troubling you will be always attacking you and uh, and that's the same thing that happens to me but then when you are actually working with the word of god and when you constantly say it even when you feel weak and maybe there are moments when you want don't want to repeat the word of god and your thoughts are strong but still you take the force and you be like you you constantly say the word of god at one point of time you can overcome your thoughts you know it gives you the strength to overcome the thoughts so that has been my experience praise god wonderful i'm very happy that you shared this because it is like this initially when i am learning a new habit or i am learning cycling or anything it's even even for example for a war do you send a soldier immediately to attack hello anybody no no correct we don't send the no. soldier immediately before the battle there is a preparation time the soldier has to have so much of training training because if he is not trained and if we leave him to the battlefield then what will happen he will die he right. won't be able to defeat the enemy so in the same way it is the same thing initially when you are practicing the word of god when you are opening your mouth and speaking the word of god there is a resistance your mind will not agree immediately but as you continue you keep on speaking keep on speaking and do not give up as sister beautifully shared there will come a point in your life where you will overcome you will be able to overcome the thoughts let's learn more about it thank you holy spirit let's go to john chapter 8 verse 31 thank you jesus praise god okay yes sister conrida you can read this so jesus was saying to the jews who had believed him if you abide in my word continually obeying my teachings and living in accordance with them then you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth regarding salvation and the truth will set you free from the penalty of sin praise god so jesus is saying this at that time he was saying it to the jews but today his word which is living and active is speaking to each one of us and he is saying to those who have believed him now all of us here in this class are we believers yes yes whoever believes in jesus is a believer praise god so he is saying if you abide in my word okay so this translation is giving a very you know a very deep meaning of it what is the meaning of abide okay sister conrida i'll ask you this okay uh, there is what is the difference between a hotel and a home a home is uh, you find your love i mean Uh, at the end of the day you you have your own people around you mm. your and basically so, it's your comfort place no yeah it's my comfort place right and a hotel can is you, something i'll go for maybe just for some time i can be there not for the entire for a longer time i won't be able to be there yeah nobody can think of staying for months in a hotel yeah they everybody would want a home right that yes. comfort that you get is in the home so to abide means to stay now if we 
our relationship with god is like that which we have at home we choose to stay in the word not make it like a hotel mm-hmm. thank you holy spirit many times isn't our relationship with god like that you know i want some i want something we go to a hotel because we want some relaxation we want a break from life so we make sometimes we treat god also like that no uh, i'll go to the hotel i'll relax and once i feel better i'll come back home home but, right but today jesus is telling you and me if you abide in my word and where is this home what can we make our home we can make the word of god our home and where we can have his word in our heart and how do we have it in our heart by confessing the scriptures by continually meditating on it regardless of what happens when we mm-hmm. choose to abide in his word that is continually obeying his teachings, teachings. and living in accordance with them then you are truly my disciples so here jesus is telling there is a difference between being a disciple and a believer see everybody believes in jesus the one who believes jesus as his lord god and savior he is a believer he is saved all of us are saved just because we are saved it doesn't mean that we are disciples now if i have to give you a example from the gospel itself how many disciples did jesus have hello 12 12 exactly but wasn't jesus preaching to large crowds wherever he went yes 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 then yeah. why didn't the crowd follow him why only 12 disciples because they agreed to accept his teachings hmm yes because discipleship is where i commit myself to live according to god's word no matter what everybody believed in jesus but not necessary that all are disciples to be a disciple is to follow the teachings of christ to continually study the word meditate on it act on it apply it in my life and use that word where i can benefit the other person and go and share the word that is when i become a disciple that is continually obeying the teachings of christ and living in accordance with them then you are truly my disciples and what will happen as you continue in the word you will it's in the scripture we will be uh, set free before that be what will happen how will we be set free if we uh, if when we uh, when obey his teachings, teachings and uh, live and according, uh, according, according to his disciple his disciple okay Okay. okay i'll tell you to know okay, tell you. yes yes uh, yes, yes uncle yes, uh, yes uncle to know the truth and to understand what the truth is that jesus yeah. Yeah. died for you and me to set us free praise god praise yes. god so you will know the truth regarding salvation and the truth will set you free and how do i know the truth when i spend time studying the word meditating on it having a personal relationship with jesus the holy spirit will teach me give me deeper revelations and that truth will set me free that is the most beautiful thing when you come to jesus you don't have to struggle to come out of your problems you have to only labor for that truth to enter you that truth which is entering you will set you free understood
praise God. But for that, there is a condition. You have to continue in my word. There has to be consistency. Just like even, not just in the word, but even now, in anything that you do, okay? It's a habit. If there's a person who's going to gym, one week became, but he didn't develop his muscles. So he leaves the gym. Will he get muscles? No. No. Why? Because he has not, he's not consistent. Consistent, yeah. In anything that we do, it is very important that we have to be consistent. And once we are consistent, we, we continue. That is when that truth will set us free. See, in, in my life also two years back, when I came to the Lord, all my journey started with one scripture, Isaiah 43 verse 1. But today I'm not on the same lines. Today, the knowledge that I have received through the Holy Spirit by studying the word in different areas of my life is so different. And that's what is the beauty that, you know, the more you go deeper and deeper with revelation knowledge, studying the word, understanding it, applying it in your life, that is the time, you know, Holy Spirit will give you deeper revelations. And with that revelation, he, you know, you will discover your assignment. You will discover your purpose that God created you for. See, I'll be very honest. I never knew that taking Bible classes was my calling. Okay. I'm a doctor by profession. And when I came to Jesus, I was broken and I was depressed. Okay. And when I came to the Lord, I got the word. That word set me free. And I just wanted to know more about Jesus. And as I kept continuing, knowing more and more, my journey with the Lord started with one testimony. Okay. Uh, I was very shy. And I was thinking, you know, what people will think about me and this and that and all of that. But then one day, and I used to attend that Melbourne sessions in the night, which Papa used to take in 2020. So one day, you know, when I heard many people sharing their testimonies, you know, Holy Spirit just inspired me and said, you know, see, you have to glorify what Jesus has done for you. So just go on the platform and share your testimony. And when I went and shared my testimony of how the Lord delivered me from depression, that is the time what happened. That is the time. You know, I got connected to so many people. Like, you know, Papa told me, he gave me a prophecy. He said that you will be ministering to many people with depression. And, you know, people all over the world will call you and contact you. And he didn't just give this prophecy, but he gave me a scripture in Corinthians that says, he comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others, okay? So if anybody is giving you any message, don't take it blindly. Make sure it is from the word. Ask them a scripture for that. If there's a scripture backing it up, only then receive it, okay? That is one thing because I mentioned prophecy. Now some will be like, okay, if one preacher comes and tells me, you know, you'll have a prosperous life and, that person is not giving you a scripture, then don't receive it. The devil can come and deceive you also in that. So it's very important. So based on that scripture, he spoke faith-filled words. And that built me up in faith. And in faith, I started my Bible class. Initially, I did not start with a Bible class. Initially, I was only ministering to people with similar problems like depression, anxiety, fear. I was only talking to people and, you know, I was giving them the word. But later on, what happened was it became difficult to minister one-on-one. -on -one. So then the Holy Spirit gave me an idea. Why don't you start a Zoom session and you take a class on the word? And as I started doing that, praise God, I got connected spiritually to so many people 
I don't even know from different parts of the world. But isn't it beautiful that they received the word, their faith got built up, and they started discovering their assignments. So if God could do this in my life, he can do much more in all the participants who are listening here. God has called you for a purpose. He has called you. And there's nothing more beautiful than fulfilling your assignment that God called you. And it is for that you need to be fat. You know what is the, mean, the full form of fat? To be fat in the Lord. Okay, write this down. To be fat in the Lord is, F stands for faithful, A stands for available, and T stands for teachable. Okay? So faithful is, am I going to continue in the word when it is convenient? Or am I going to do it even at a time when it is difficult? Available. My availability to commit myself to studying the word of God, no matter what happens. Am I going to give up? Or am I going to be available whenever help is required? If the Holy Spirit is telling me, instructing me to do something, go and reach out to somebody else. Am I saying, giving excuses, saying, no, no, I, I have this work to do. I have that work to do. I will do that and then I will go. If that is your attitude, then you will miss out on God's best for you. And the last part is teachable. In your journey with the Lord, you know, when you start, you're like a baby. And babies are cute. We all love them. But aren't babies attention seekers too? Don't they want all the love, the attention, the pampering? But don't the babies need correction also at some point when they're doing mischief? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Why does the mother like to beat the baby? No, no. But then sometimes but why she, she has to. Why? Because she has to teach the baby what is right. Yeah. She's doing it out of love. So in the same way, in our spiritual journey too, you know, we have to be humble enough to understand that, you know, we are going to make mistakes. There are different areas of my life where I there is scope for correction and I need to make the corrections. For that, I need to first accept my mistake and that will only be possible if I have a teachable spirit. If I do not have a teachable spirit, it is very difficult for me to work in the kingdom of God. Not because God doesn't love me, but when God is showing me where I'm going wrong, if I'm getting offended, I'm getting upset, I'm getting cranky, I'm getting sensitive about the small things and being like, no, no, you know, but why this, that, others should change, I shouldn't change, and all of that attitude, then I cannot serve the Lord, even though God has a plan for me. So three things, faithful, available, teachable. If these three points also you focus on, and you follow it in your life, you will discover God's best for you. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Would anyone like to add something here? Anybody? Hello? Nicole? Yes, Priya. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, no, actually, uh, can you explain a little more about this uh, FAT? Okay. So what exactly you want me to like elaborate on? Which point? No, this is like, like what do you mean? Like we, um, like you mean in our spiritual journey, we have to be like this, right? Yes. Like... In anything, like for example, I'll give you a good example. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Okay. So, Nicole, you're pursuing a subject, correct? You're pursuing your bachelor's, right? 
Yeah. So, in that bachelor's, are are you investing time and effort? Like, yeah. Why are you investing time and effort? Because I, I mean, this is something that I wanted. I want the degree. Like, that's my goal. You want? Yes, that is your goal, right? So for that yeah. reason, you are committing yourself to it, correct? Yeah. You're being faithful. You're being faithful, even okay. though there yeah. are times you don't like to study certain things. You are still being faithful. You are. you know you're not giving up you're being faithful that is first thing second thing is whenever now to study the subject you need to invest a lot of time so for that you have lectures you have assignments and that is taking you a lot of times of yours right yeah but are you saying no i will not do this assignment i'll attend the class only when i feel like attending it i will bunk the lectures or are you attending it consistently attending it you are attending it you are doing the assignment even though you don't feel like doing sometimes you are tired but you are still doing it right yeah whether i like That it is, or not i still do it so you are faithful and you are available correct yeah yes and the last point when when in your in while studying this course um you know there are certain things concepts that you don't understand and you know your teacher she has a discussion with you nicole this is a particular place where you need improvement you need to work on it so what do you do at that time that time i'll work i mean like you know me no you mean like if i have a doubt or something not just a doubt but like something you know you have a wrong idea about a particular concept in your studies you have not no, understood I'll, it properly yeah yeah then i'll approach to my teachers i'll focus more on that concept like you know understanding and you make it. the correction and you yeah. once you get the understanding you will make the correction correct yes so that is to have a teachable spirit now in the physical now see i explained you with the help of a parable like in your day to day routine in your practical life only you are applying this aren't you fat when it comes to your studies yeah so the same fat you can be in the lord the same thing what you're doing in your practical life what you're doing in your personal life that same attitude if you have for your spiritual life you're going to see amazing things oh okay okay i understood now you understood no praise god yeah. <laughs> isn't this beautiful how holy spirit teaches us with real life examples now i understand why jesus used to teach in parables he used to give the parables of the farming the sowing and all those today we can give parables of our practical lives <laughs> praise god <laughs> thank you jesus thank you for asking that question i'm sure it's blessing so many souls listening to this uh priya computer? yes yes nikol yeah priya if you don't mind is can you like show it from the scriptures like is it there which one this uh, fat itself like how it's like connected in the scriptures okay i don't have the scriptural uh, this thing the exact scriptures for it but i will you know get back to you in the next session maybe yeah okay no problem i like you know there are scriptures for this but i don't have it right now with me but i will get back to you in the next session with the proper scriptures on this yeah sure thank you jesus yeah sister contrida would you like to add something uh 
uh, maybe as she had asked you about this uh, thing only i mean the faithful available and teachable i was just trying to think uh the same way how she had asked like a little bit of more more explanation on that okay yeah okay so what we can do in the next class no we can learn elaborately on it on each point like faithful available and teachable and i will you know give examples with the help of scriptures what do you say okay that would be better yeah that would be better no thank you for putting up this question so even that gives me an opportunity to study something <laughs> praise god thank you jesus uncle claude anything you would like to add no priya nice session keep doing your the kind of work you do this ministry of sharing the love of god especially those who don't experience what it means to love jesus people experiencing vacuum in their lives the kind of classes the way you conduct it's so meaningful and touching crisp clear keep it up my family is in india and i'm sitting here all alone and i'm traveling tonight so i had some free time to listen to your class and i'm blessed to get connected with you god bless everyone thank you praise god praise god glory to god glory to god amen thank you jesus okay so nikol would you like to make the closing prayer today yeah okay priya um i thank you jesus i praise you heavenly father thank you holy spirit thank you lord for this beautiful moment lord jesus and i thank you for this wonderful day oh lord and as we are gathered here i thank you oh lord that we feel your presence around us your blessings over us oh lord and mostly that through the holy spirit you have enlightened our minds oh lord and you have strengthened our hearts also tonight i thank you jesus for this very special moment and as how through faith lord jesus that the holy spirit whatever we have learned today in the name of jesus it will all turn into actions within us and people will see the light of yours within us thank you jesus amen beautiful prayer thank you jesus thank you all for joining in see you all tomorrow so tomorrow the class will be at 8 am in the morning so if you can join in you all can otherwise the recordings are available praise god bye bye thank take you. care